This video has been made possible by Rebus Farm, the professional render service. Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. Well guys, today we're going to talk about alpha images. Okay, so what are they and what can you do with them? Okay, we're going to create some alpha images in Photoshop and do not be confused. We're not talking about alpha channels, the black and white ones. We're talking about alpha images which is a result of alpha channels, and I'll get into that in the next video, okay? So alpha images, we're gonna create them in Photoshop, we're gonna apply them in Maya, and we're gonna create some cool effects like uh, grungy looking windows, uh, individual leaves on trees, uh, grass in your scene, and so forth, okay? So let's check that out, here we go. All right guys, well, we're in Maya 2017, and what I wanna show you guys today is how to create a grungy looking uh, glass plane for a window frame. Now, the reason I'm doing that is I received that question in my uh, Facebook uh, Hangout group, and that brought me to the topic of alpha images and how to apply them. But before we do that, I'll show you what the effect is, okay? So I just uh, modeled a simple uh, window frame like so, and a simple plane as my glass, okay? I'm gonna get them back in position, just hit Control-Z to go back. Now what I'm simply gonna do is I'm gonna select my window plane here, I'm gonna right click, go to Assign New Material, we'll do a standard Lambert, and then I'm gonna go into the Lambert, I'm gonna hit the checkered box, go to File, Folder, and here is a file that I got of uh, textures.com, formerly known as cgtextures.com. I'm just gonna hit open, and there you go. Now, that is how easy that is, all right? Now, the reason that we can do this that easily is because this is an alpha image. Now, if you have a, a PBR-based uh, texturing system, let's say you have a Substance Painter or 3D Code or something like that, you probably wouldn't be using this that often, um, maybe in the case of a glass plane, but not if you want to add, you know, uh, any grungy looking type stuff for a model. Uh, but what I'm going to show you is uh, how do you create that type of file in Photoshop so you can create your own, okay? So let's uh, jump into Photoshop and I'll show you. Hi right, guys, we're in Photoshop. We're gonna go to uh, File and New. And here's where you need to pay attention. First of all, we need to decide on the size. Let's just make it square. So we'll do 800 by 800. But more importantly, the background content. Make sure you have transparent selected, okay? Now, when you hit OK, you get these uh, black and white squares, which uh, pretty much means, and what Photoshop is telling you, this is a completely transparent file, okay? So what I'm gonna do is simply um, draw something on it. Doesn't really matter whatever it is, okay? We'll do, uh, let's see, we'll take a brush here. Where'd he go? We'll uh, make sure we got a reasonable size for our brush. A bit bigger, that's fine. Hardness, okay. So this is a black brush. I'm just gonna go around and, you know, put a smiley on it, whatever. Now, what's important here is that you have black information that in this case is visible. It could have been another color. I'll just take red, whatever. Okay, and we'll do a little bow tie thingy going on there. Okay, so all of this is in color. That doesn't matter. What's important is that the background is uh, transparent, okay? So when we go and save this, save as, make sure you save this out as a PNG file, okay? Because that will uh, hold on to that um, transparent information. And we'll just call this test one. And we'll save that on our desktop. And then we'll jump back into Maya and I'll show you. Okay, here we are. We're gonna take this guy again. We're gonna right click and go to assign new material. Hit Lambert. Go to the checkered box. Select file again, folder, and let's take our test one and hit open. And there you go. That's how easy that is, all right? Now, <clears throat> in this case, I'm drawing something, but let's say I want to, I don't know, project a, a leaf on it or grass or whatever, okay? Let's do a, a different a use. In this case, we are talking about something on a window plane, but what if you want to have, let's say, grass in your scene, okay? Okay, back to Photoshop. All right, so I created another new file, as you can see, completely transparent. Now, a couple of things I can do here. I can change the color to green. 
something like that and then I'll make it a very small brush I'll make sure the hardness is set okay make that a bit smaller even let's do five or so so if I were to come in here and just make all a bunch of these lines here and then just uh, switch up that color and just keep uh, hang on switch up that color and keep on going until this whole area here is filled up I would have the exact same effect and then I could go back into uh, Maya put that onto a plane and then I can put that in the background as a set of grass okay but you know what if my drawing skills are not too great and I don't know how to paint grass well what I'll do is I'll take an image of grass or a flower or a leaf and use that so that's what we're gonna show you next here we go Okay guys, we're still in uh, Photoshop. Uh, what I did is I pulled in a, uh, an example of a uh, alpha image for a grass. So you can see the background is transparent. The only thing we see is our grass leaves. I'm gonna save this out. So I'm gonna go to uh, save as, and I'll save it as grass PNG. And then we'll go back into Maya and I'll show you. Okay guys, well we're uh, back in Maya. I got rid of my uh, window and window plane and what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a simple new plane. This has way too much subdivision. So let's hit Control A for our attribute editor. We're gonna go to polyplane one and let's set that to one by one subdivision. There we go. I'm gonna hit E to rotate it and hold down J to snap it. There we go. And what I'm going to do is apply a new material, or actually I can even use the existing default Lambert. And I'm going to go into the color tab, hit the checkered box, go to file, folder, and this guy. All right. As soon as we do that, and I'll just rotate this. As soon as we do that, you can see that what was uh, white and gray checkered in Photoshop is now transparent as before. And what you only see here is your grass. Okay. I need W to move that up like so. And what you can do here is if you, uh, when you need more than this, you can hit Control D to duplicate. And uh, what you would do is pull that out, maybe pull it even back a little bit. And you would kind of get that depth effect that, uh, you know, Disney uh, used to use back in the day. Like so. And you would use multiple sets like this. Don't go and copy this all the way over. You will obviously see that it's a duplicate and I'll show you. I'll hit Control D to duplicate, move that over. And if I hit Shift D a couple of times, hang on, Control D, move. That's not working, that's fine. Anyway, you can see clearly that it's a duplicate. And that's what you want to avoid, all right? Okay, so that is grass. What else can you use this for? Let's say you have a tree. And I'll make a ridiculously bad, ah, that's nice. I changed my default labor, that's why this looks weird. Okay, uh, assign new material, Lambert, there we go, all right? So we're gonna make a quick tree here. So let's go in. And I'll set that to eight. I'll set caps to zero. All right. And what we're gonna do is right click, go to face, select that, hit R, kind of scale that in. Control E to extrude, W to pull up, and maybe move that over a little bit. And hit R to scale that in. G to repeat, W to pull up. R to scale in, G to repeat, W to pull up, and R to scale in, G to repeat, W to pull up, and R to scale in. Okay, now let's put in a few branches here. Let's go to insert edge loop, make sure we've got a manual setting going on, and we'll do uh, maybe one here. One here, and one up there. Q on our keyboard. Let's take this face. Control E to extrude, W to pull out, R to scale in, G to repeat, W to pull up, 
and R the scale in. G to repeat, W to pull out, and R to the scale in. I'll do one more. I'm not going to do all of them. Just so you know what the idea is. Okay. Control E, W to pull out, R to scale down, G to repeat, W to pull out, R to scale down, and one more, G, W, and R. Oops. Okay. So let's say this is our ridiculously bad looking tree. What you can do here is you can take a polygon uh, plane as before. We'll hit W, we'll pull that up. And we'll move that over. We'll change that to one by one again. And then actually you can see because we have our default Lambert still with that grass going on there. What you can do is you can actually place individual leaves on your tree if you like. Okay, that's the idea there. Okay, so these are just a few examples of what you can do with alpha images. Uh, hopefully they were helpful for you. It's just a quick and dirty tutorial, but nevertheless, uh, I just wanted to share that with you guys on this uh, Sunday morning. And uh, yeah, hopefully it's helpful. So if you've got any questions, as always, let me know. And that said, thank you guys for watching and see you guys next time. Bye.